Hello and welcome to Engineering Apex. In today's video, we will discuss organizational disobedience and why and when employees use it to set their organizations on the right track. To disobey is to not do as you are told or to refuse authority. Authority is not always right. Therefore, sometimes refusing authority or speaking out against it is the responsible thing to do. Responsible disobedience and civil disobedience are not new concepts. Today, around the world, communities are speaking out and protesting against companies and regimes. Laws and rules do not encompass everything. And with the evolving society that we have today, these rules are required to be updated regularly. Also, wrongdoing against people or nature cannot be allowed to continue, as it will harm us all. For all those reasons, civil disobedience today is a global phenomenon. We can identify three modes or forms of disobedience. The first form is disobedience by contrary action. In this form, people try to reduce the damage done by their companies or governments through doing the opposite of what the companies and governments are doing. Let's say you work in a company that cuts trees down excessively. Protesting by contrary action in this scenario means to volunteer in a tree planting initiative in order to reduce the harm made by your company on nature and society. The second form is disobedience by non-participation. It is when you refuse to take part in a task or work that you believe violates your moral integrity. One example could be that your company has recently taken a weapon manufacturing contract that you believe may cause the death of many people. You go and tell management that you can't be part of this project as it violates your moral integrity. Finally, we have disobedience by protest. This is where things go a little bit more public. The, here you openly state you are against the doings of your company or government and you declare them wrong and in need of change. Managers and companies can believe that their employees are being disobedient by performing contrary action when they suspect that some actions or the overall lifestyle of an employee reflects badly on the organization. Also, managers can believe that those external activities may be against the interests of the company. Regardless, a company or a manager does not have the right to judge the lifestyle or volunteer work of an employee. Meddling to this level can be considered a violation of privacy and can lead to, uh, the employee to take more drastic actions against the company. Disobedience by non-participation is usually coupled with a valid reason for disobeying. Some examples include refusing to participate in designing a product that you deem unsafe or harmful to society. Or for example, refusing to carry out an action that is against your professional code. Or refusing to design a weapon of mass destruction. Protest is a stage that employees reach when they feel that they have exhausted all possible routes to alleviate the situation. When employees believe that drastic change is required, they publicly announce it by several forms of protest. And sometimes they may go as far as whistleblowing if they deem it necessary. After mentioning all three types of disobedience, one would ask if companies can retaliate against those employees and punish them. So is disobedience punishable? Well, it shouldn't be. Employees who exercise their freedom of speech and self-expression should not be punished in any way. If they are affected negatively in any manner, that would present serious threats on individual freedom. Another point is that companies have no control over their employees' external activities, lifestyle, and beliefs. They cannot intervene with it, or this could lead to some sort of discrimination. Therefore, all companies are legally obligated not to intervene in the personal lives of their employees and allow them to maximize their personal freedom. So what can or what should organizations do? 
Companies must respect the legitimate requests of their employees. For example, organizations must honor non-participation requests, especially if the beliefs and violations are well-founded. One thing organizations shouldn't do is put their employees in ultimatum-like positions, where they either do as they are told and violate their beliefs and moral codes, or get fired. This brings us to the end of part B of chapter 7, where we focused on organizational disobedience. In the next video, we will continue in chapter 7 and discuss whistleblowing, so stay tuned.